Got an AC condenser here. It has a crack in the plastic pan right up in that corner. So this was an attempted repair and this repair actually lasted about three to four months with baking soda and super glue. I was able to repair this crack and then uh, the crack is leaking now again and it has taken water and it is leaking that water into the sides of the material here and down in to this tray down here where the furnace fan is and you don't want this fan to get wet because if it gets rusty and the bearings wear out then you're going to be replacing a fan and you're going to be spending a lot more money than necessary so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fix that crack and I'll show you the tools that you're going to need. Now this furnace is an Amana. Uh, this is probably a 2017 or 2018 model. It's a big furnace. It has a big condenser in it. And what I ended up doing was there's a panel on the back of it near all the labels where all the tubes go in from the outside from the AC unit that comes into the house. And I took this panel, which had sheet metal screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, let's get seven on. There's seven. And then there's some screws up in the corners here, and those screws don't need to be touched. This one does, but this one does not. That's actually for the rest of the unit. You take those screws off, you set your panel down there. I just put the screws over here, got myself some rubber gloves if necessary. And then what I used was the impact that I showed. And then I used, to find the leak, I used a little screwdriver. And I gently put the screwdriver underneath so I could lift and get enough leverage on it. So you could actually see where it was dripping right there. If you see that big glob right there, over right up inside there, that's where the water was dripping and it drips down inside the unit, goes all over the fan and goes all over everything, especially if the fan is moving, it's going to circulate that water and you don't want that. You don't want your bearings and your fan rusting out. Now here's the tools that you're going to end up needing. I got a flathead screwdriver. I have an impact gun with a bit to remove the sheet metal screws. Just any brand baking soda, any brand super glue is fine. And then I just took Q-tip and I took the ends off the Q-tip right here. And then I went ahead and poured some baking soda on there, took some glue, mixed it around until it was a paste, and then I applied it to that black plastic pan where the crack was at, and I let it sit for 24 hours. And that did the trick. That got me by for four months. So if you don't want to replace your pan, the simple fix could end up saving you a lot of money. You could just do that every so often. And eventually you'll have to replace the pan if it gets bad enough. But in the near term, if it's a small hairline crack, or a small puncture, you can replace it with that, and you can actually even take the end of the Q-tip here, rip it off, and soak that in the baking soda and the super glue. You can wad it up into a ball and actually stuff that into the crack, and that'll actually give you some, some girth. Push that in there, lay some more super glue and some baking soda mixture on top of that, and let it sit, and it'll dry to a nice hard lump, and that'll patch up the hole for you. Number one, before you're even going to repair the pan, you want to make sure that the power is shut off. I'll give you an example of this. This is the power being on. Usually they have a light. Turn the power off to the unit. I got a dehumidifier down here. Try to sop up any water that's left over in the fibers there. And that way, if the power is turned off, to the unit itself, you don't have to worry about getting electrocuted or touching anything. Nothing's going to turn on. No one can turn it on from upstairs. You don't have to deal with the unit at all. Being powered on is fantastic. Nothing to worry about. You can just go in and do the repair that you got to do. So usually with the cracks in the pan, you'll get water. That you can see some a wet spot over there, way in the back. And then you can see the dampness right there. And the water drip right there. So I just take a towel. Wipe all that up. And then I'll move around to the back of the unit and then take off the metal plate so I can actually gain access to the condenser itself. For me, I had 
HVAC tape covering all the gaps so that way everything stays as efficient as possible. But if you don't have any HVAC tape, don't worry about removing it. You don't have to add any on if you don't want to. Just something that I did. But these are the screws that are inside of the back of the cover here. And then I'm going to take my impact gun and then I'm just going to gently go ahead and remove those. If you don't have an impact gun, socket set screwdriver like this is a flathead screwdriver. You could easily remove it. Put the screws over there so that way I got access to them when I need them. And then these are already done. They're already undone and this one is actually fairly loose so it doesn't actually come out of there for some reason. Okay, I want to make sure that that doesn't fall off. And then now gently I'm going to remove the cover. Set the cover on the side. And then you want to do an inspection in the pan and you want to find out where it is that your leak is happening. And usually for me whenever I look at the pan you can see how all that's dry. There's water build up here and then I would look over on the sides as well if I wanted to take this panel off but I already know where the leak is on this one but you'd want to inspect your whole pan and this is where I already did a prior repair so I know the crack is there 100% but I would just take a screwdriver pry up on this and I'd actually be able to look underneath to see where the, the leak is coming from. Now you might have to run your AC unit for a little while so water builds up so you can see where it's stripping through. One of the ways that you'll know that your pan is leaking is obviously it'll be wet down below inside where the furnace fan is but another way too is if you do not hear any water dripping I have a drain hose right here and you should actually see water coming out of there as the AC unit runs. If you do not see water coming out of there as the AC unit runs then there's a good chance that your idea that there's a crack in the pan is 100% legit. When you do find the crack in the pan then you're going to want to go ahead and make up the super glue and baking soda solution and you're going to want to fill in the gap just the way that I explained previously and then you let that sit for 24 hours but you can put this cover back on uh, I would suggest putting it on loosely screwing it in leaving it on but not putting it not tightening all of the metal screws down hundred percent just making sure they're on so that the cover is not going to fall off because you're going to want to check this again after you did the repair now that I've done the repair I put the metal cover back on and I'm going to go ahead and tighten all these bolts down and you don't want to get too fancy just maybe an ugga dugga like that and I threaded all these in by hand and you can hear that little pop that's usually what I look for like that and that's it now I'll go ahead and put the HVAC tape back on all right, now the back cover is completely bolted back in. All the screws are on, it's nice and tight, it's not going anywhere. My repair is done, so I don't have to worry about going back in. I'm not gonna be double checking it, it's completely fine. Now, a very important step is to get these covers back on. And you definitely need these covers on because otherwise your system will not run. It has a safety switch right over on the side here and when you're running this for heat when the time comes you don't want this to be open you want the unit to be sealed up you want it to be sealed up anyway but you have a safety switch there and when this closes onto the safety switch it allows the unit to run so if you follow all the steps that I told you and you do fix the crack in the pan and you come back and put everything together and you go upstairs and turn your unit on to see if it runs and for some reason it will not run double check and make sure that you have this either bottom or top tray covering the door because if you don't have it on correctly then what will happen is the unit will not run. It needs to push that safety switch down and you can see how it's now flush against there. It's compressing that so that means when I do turn the power back onto this it will say okay I can run again. Not a problem. You want to get both doors put back on correctly the way you need to. Ouch. There we go. Get these put over here. Sorry for the camera, but doing this one-handed is not the easiest thing in the world. Okay, the screws are in there correctly. All right, 
And now I'm gonna go ahead and I just hand tighten these. I don't I don't go overboard. I don't grab a screwdriver and torque them down or anything like that. I don't want to get a wrench. Just hand tightened. And then make sure that this is all threaded in by hand. I would suggest that about every single bolt that you even take out of the back. Thread them in by hand first and make sure that they're going in. See like this is turning nice and easy. Make sure they're going in nice and easy before you start torquing them down with your impact gun or a screwdriver or anything that you're going to use because you do not want to damage the holes. Yes, you can get bigger metal screws and put them in to repair it if that's the case, but why go through that if you can just save what you have.